Hello YouTube, Goddard Radio Mosca here again with another beer review for you, as is usual. Um, now for this one we're going to go to the Highlands, so we're sticking to Scotland today, and we're actually going to visit a brewery that I've never reviewed anything from on the channel for you before, so this should be quite interesting, and I have tried some of their beers before and been really quite impressed with them, but I've never tried this one, so completely new beer for me anyway. So we're going to go up to the Black Isle Brewery today and have a taste of the Red Kite Ale, and um, this one actually seems to be quite well rated on Rate Beer and, and Beer advocate and stuff so I'm quite interested to try this one for you today and um, I actually I, my parents were the ones who actually brought me this beer so thank you to my parents for feeding my habit if you like but they brought me back a case of six of these they managed to stop off on the brewery when they were away up at Dingwall or something like that or All Ness they were away up in the Highlands doing some stuff up there and they brought me some beer back so thanks to my parents for that um, but as is usual with my beer reviews I'll take you through a brief history of the brewery and tell you a little bit about where the beer comes from and all of that sort of thing but as I always say if you are simply just interested in the tasting of this beer then feel free to go on towards the latter part of the video and you will catch that particular segment and as always the brewery website is in the video description there and there's a link that will take you to my future Black Isle beer reviews I've got a case of six of these but obviously there won't be any there just now because this is the first one so just check that out if you are, do happen to be watching a little bit down the line so to move on to the history of this brewery anyway as I mentioned before the Black Isle is located to the north of Inverness which is the capital of the Highlands and for those of you watching outside of Scotland so you know exactly where we're talking about here I always say that Scotland looks a bit like a monster's head and then you get a little corner in the water just where the monster looks as if it's getting a bit of a Mohican sort of thing and just in this little corner here is where you'll find Inverness and then the Black Isle is on the eastern coast if you like of this Mohican and then it's just it's sort of you just go up a little bit from the north of Inverness and it's right in there but there's actually two breweries on the Black Isle in the northern part of the Black Isle there's the Cromarty Brewery who are actually quite a new brewery very up and coming and producing some really good beers in fact and then you have these guys who are the older ones and these guys are actually a specialist organic brewery and they're producing some very good beer there as well and as I've said to you before in many occasions on my Scottish beer reviews our, our craft beer industry is actually standing up very well in beer festivals against American beers and things like that so we're really producing some very good stuff so it's quite an interesting time to get yourself into Scottish craft beer but anyway to move Move on to the history of the brewery itself. The brewery was actually founded in 1998 when David Galwin converted a group of farm buildings at Munlochy into a brewery and the farm is actually called the Allen Grange and apparently the land of this farm was described as being of quote superior quality for the brewer and distiller by Sir Roderick Mackenzie who was a landowner and he, this was back in his statistical account that, he, account that he wrote in 1790 and the name Allen Grange apparently also translates into English from Gaelic as meaning a field of fertile corn but David apparently has worked in this region of Scotland for only twenty for over 20 years sorry and is firmly committed to its preservation and his idea behind founding a brewery was to be able to offer like local pubs and restaurants the ability to serve a locally brewed beer and the Highlands isn't actually an area that's traditionally known for producing beer obviously it's more uh, it's more known for producing some of the best whiskies around and um, but for their first 11 years the brewery were actually operating a small five barrel brewing plant but in the winter of 2008 they actually began to build a completely new 30 barrel plant in the buildings that had been built on the farm where the brewery resides but the construction work took over 18 months and it increased the conditioning capacity to 210 barrels for the brewery and the brewing is actually conducted by the team of Colin Stronger and uh, Andrew Fraser as well so they also have a new well on the farm which they can use to source their brewing liquor and, hundred, and they also have 120 acres of land where they grow their, or, their own organic barley so they're sourcing a lot of stuff locally which is quite cool as well and the brewery also have a cow called Molly who gives them milk and apparently she eats the grain from the mash tongue that's, uh, that's obviously used up there but today they can apparently brew 10,000 litres of beer per day which can be packaged in bottles, casks or kegs and they send their beer all, all across Scotland and the rest of the UK as well and they also export to various countries. They mentioned on their brewery uh, website that they were exporting to Sweden and Japan and things like that. So this brewery obviously is at the kind of major stage of growth, if you like. But um, the, you can visit the brewery for tours as well. And there's also a blog on the website where you can keep up to date with the, the latest goings on at the brewery. And the most up to date thing that I saw on the blog was that apparently their beer has just started to go on the shelves of Sainsbury's throughout the UK. And they've also had a new, they also signed a new distribution deal with a company in the States that sees their beer distributed in 
Alabama in the southern in the southeastern part of the USA. So quite an interesting time for the brewery if they're really starting to expand over to the states. But that's your brief history of the Black Isle Brewery anyway. But just to list the other beers you can get from these guys, you get the blonde beer, which is actually the one that I've tried before. This is quite common to find in a lot of Tesco outlets and things like that. I believe that's their mo their most popular beer, in fact. But that's a European style pale lager. You also get the Golden Eye, which is a golden bitter beer. You get the Heather Honey one, which is a honey beer, obviously. You get Hibernator Oatmeal Stout, which is supposed to be a really, really good one. Hopefully, I can review that for you soon. You get the Porter. You get the Red Kite Ale, which is this guy here. And you also get the Scotch Ale and the Yellow Hammer, which is a bitter beer as well. So, let's get on to the tasting of this guy. As I say, I'm quite interested to try this one here for you. This guy is a 4.2% red or amber ale, it's been described as. And it uses Maris Otter Pale and Crystal Malts with Challenger and Styrian Golding Hops. So, this one should actually be quite interesting to try. I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little closer look at the artwork on the bottle here. Quite a bit of condensation, so I'll just give it a little wipe. I must have had it quite well chilled, actually. So this is the typical sort of Black Isle Brewery a label art that you get on these ones so as you can see it's just a nice sort of thistle there and all of their beers actually have different colours here all of the things it's usually just the text and the little dot on the thistle that's different but there are some uh, other different bottles here but I actually quite like the way these are presented and you can see again that's sort of repeated on the bottle cap here so I think my light's being a little bit funny, but as you can see, it just says Black Isle Brewery on the thing. It's actually quite a nice bottle cap, in fact. It has the address for it on the side as well, and as you can see, 4.2% alcohol by volume. It does have a little thing, I think, it says it's supported by the EU agriculture and stuff. And it's actually got, it's quite funny, actually, it's got Finnish or Danish on the side of it. I think it's, yeah, I think it's actually Finnish and Danish that it has on the side of the, the thing there. And it has a uh, David Galwin signature on it as well, and it's got it says "Save the Planet, Drink Organic" as well, which is quite that's quite cool actually. As I mentioned, this is a specialist, um, it's a it's a specialist organic brewery. It does have a little bit of a description on the side here. It says the locally malted barley is grown on our organic farm without the use of artificial fertilizers or herbicides. The crystal clear brew water is sourced from bedrock 300 feet below the brewery, and the hops are cultivated organically. We at Black Isle Brewery believe that our beer is best for you and the environment too and it says this one is a full bodied amber ale which with hints of caramel blackcurrant and autumn leaves and it says as well just about the brewery black isle brewery is based near inverness in the heart of the scottish highlands we make a range of fresh natural organic beers from malted barley wheat water hops and yeast so quite an interesting one there so let's get this guy open and get on with the tasting here as i've mentioned this is my first beer review from the black isle brewery and there will be more to come so as you can see, a nice little bit of a smoky open in there. So let's get it out into the glass and see how we get on here. Oh, it's actually quite a, a bit more, uh, it's quite a bit darker than I thought it would be actually. I thought it would be quite a bright amber, but we'll just see how we get on here. It actually smells really fresh when it's coming out of the bottle as well. Just give the last little bit of sugar in case there's any sediment to come out. I think there was just a little tiny bit there, but yeah. So as you can see, it's poured a really, really nice colour. It's, oh, it's actually come out more red this time. I'll just bring the light back a little bit and let you see the colour of this beer a little bit more. If I bring that up to you there, you can see it's actually quite a nice reddish amber colour, if you like. It's a little, I think it's maybe a little bit hazy. In fact, no, it's not. It's actually completely transparent. It's just the dark colour of it that kind of makes it like that. I'm sure you can see my fingers through the through the glass there. But as you can see it's got a slightly off white head on it, just about a half finger of that. It was bigger, but I would say yeah, a half finger sort of slightly off white head. A really nice sort of I would describe it as a kind of reddish amber colour I would say. I don't know how I don't know if you can describe it as it's not quite a cherry amber colour, but it's a really attractive looking beer actually. Really, really nice looking. But let's give it a smell and see how we get on here. As I said before, when it was coming out of the bottle, it smells very, very fresh. You've got a nice little hint of kind of caramel in there as well, and I think there's there's a sort of little bit of herbal character to it as well, I think. But it smells very, very fresh. As I say, you're getting a lot of kind of caramel and toffee, uh, toffee notes in there, I would say. Yeah, you're getting that nice little underlying of brown sugar, but there's quite a bit of bready aroma in there too, and I think it has just a little hint of nut as well. It's got this really nice kind of brownie, caramelly, nutty aroma to it. 
it's quite an attractive smell in beer. Like I say, it, it smells quite fresh, and there is an under there is a little bit of kind of berry fruit in there as well. I can see what they say about the sort of black currants. There is berry fruit in there, definitely. Yeah, so it's a nice smell in beer, but it's mainly malty. The fruity aroma is more when you take a more deep uh, breath when you're smelling it, but. It is a really, it's more of a malty beer this guy, but it smells really nice, it smells really fresh as well. Just as I always say with my beer reviews, if you get one of these beers, just take a little bit of time to actually give it a smell and take in, just take in the aroma of these things. You can pick up a lot about the taste of these beers usually with that, but some beers will surprise you. But let's give this guy a taste and see how we get on here. It's quite an interesting one actually. On first taste, it actually, to me, tastes more like a bitter beer, but let's give it another go. Yeah, it does, it, to me, on first taste, it actually reminds me of the of the, the bottlenose bitter from the, uh, what do you call it, from the Space Side Craft Brewery. It reminds me a little bit of that, actually, in terms of taste. But it's got a nice sort of caramel and toffee malt opening there and there's a bit of I think there's quite a bit of toasted uh, bread character in there as well I would say a little bit of cereal maybe in there too that gives it just a little hint of spice character as well but yeah it's opening up with a nice sort of slightly darker caramel toffee malt and there's a little bit of nuts in there as well. Like I was saying in the aroma, you can pick up that nice little nutty aroma as well. But yeah, you're picking up. When you get more into the aftertaste, you'll start to pick up the berry fruits, uh, the berry fruits as well. And there is just a little bit of herbal character in the in the end of this beer as well. But yeah, as I was saying, you're starting off with a really nice, kind of quite light toffee, caramel aroma, uh, caramel flavour, sorry, with a little bit of nutty character. Then you're getting the sort of dark and red fruits in there. It's actually quite, um, it's quite a little, I think it's more, it's like plums and black currants in there. It does have a little bit, the, the fruity flavour does have a little bit of the mildness that you, you would expect from the, uh, from black currants and things like that, like they're saying on the bottle, but I think... The sort of it's always the esters that give you the fruity flavors in beer, and I think there is a, just a little hint of sharpness to it as well, which is more of sort of it's more like plums, I would say, or even figs. But yeah, it's got a nice. The malt base of this beer is actually quite a. Uh, it's actually really quite nice. As I say, you're getting a good mix of the sort of caramel and toffee brown sugar flavours mixed in with some toasted bread character. It does have just a little hint of a roasted character to it, I would say, and there's some nutty flavours mixed in there as well. So it's a really interesting uh, malt base on this beer, and you've got just that nice kind of mild fruit that comes out a little bit more on the aftertaste. And I think the beer just has a little tiny bit of cereal spice as well. And that sort of stick into the middle of the tongue, I would say, as you go into the aftertaste of this beer. It's a really nice one. Yeah, it's a really, really nice beer. And, uh, but yeah, it's got a really interesting malt base. So if you like a quite an interesting malt base on your beers, give this guy a go. But I think there is a little bit of cereal spice that just kind of sits in there and on the aftertaste as well, around the edges of the tongue you're sort of just getting that residual kind of black currant and uh, plummy fruit as well. So it's a really nice beer. The caramel flavours actually disappear in it from the uh, in the aftertaste. So you're getting that only really when you're tasting the beer. In terms of the mouthfeel with this guy, I definitely describe it as mid-bodied. And it's actually quite a smooth beer as well. The carbonation is very soft, and there's only a little bit of dry character and and uh, a little bit of dry character. I don't think it's really very bitter at all, to be honest with you. It's quite a drinkable beer. And as I noticed when I when I was in Germany and drinking the organic beers that you get there, this again does have the sort of 
I find with organic beers you get just a little bit of a sort of chalky mouthfeel and it get it makes them a li it makes their beers a little bit more uh, full so I, w I do wonder what they actually do with organic beers that makes them just a little bit more full but this guy does have a nice it has that really nice kind of um, chalky mouthfeel that gives it a little bit more in terms of the body it's, it makes you a little bit more full when you're drinking this beer so it's, it's really really cool but I really would be interested to know what it is they do with organic beers that gives it that mouthfeel because as I say all the organic beers that I reviewed for you in Germany which was the the Brauereisung Klosterhof Heidelberg all of those ones had that kind of similar chalky mouthfeel to them that this guy does but it's really nice I, I pardon me I enjoy that with it when it comes to these beers organic beers are very very interesting and this guy is actually these guys are actually one of the premier organic breweries in the in the in Britain, I guess. But yeah, overall, a very very nice beer, I would say. If you haven't tried anything from the Black Isle Brewery, definitely give them a go. I really quite like this one. And I look forward to reviewing more of their beers for you at a later date. But give this guy a try if you like your beers to have a sort of quite an interesting malt base. As I say, you've got a nice mix of sort of caramel toffee brown sugars with some cereal spice in there, toasted bread and a little bit of nutty flavour. Then you've got just a nice little subtle hint of kind of berry, uh, blackcurrant and plummy fruits on the finish there. It's a really, really nice beer and it's actually very well balanced in flavour. Quite a sessionable one in fact. So if you want something that's quite sessionable and a little bit darker, definitely give this guy a go. But um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed my beer review of this guy. I recommend that you have a little look at the Black Isle Brewery. I've, I've really enjoyed actually doing this beer review for you. I do have another four or five beers to review from these guys so you will see that appear in the near future but thanks again for watching my beer reviews. As always comment in the, the, the comment section below and let me know your own thoughts on this beer if you ha do happen to have tried it. Check out their websites and the other links I've got there in the video description as well and please like, subscribe, share all the usual YouTube stuff. Help my channel grow a little bit and I'll catch you soon with another beer review. Cheers.